everyone, Sophia here from My Great Challenge. Welcome back to my channel. I know I have been missing in action for over a week. I just posted a video uh, two days ago, but that was something I had done already. Um, so I have some explanation to do. And uh, if you are following me on my Facebook page for My Great Challenge, you probably know what happened already. But if you are not, you probably are in the dark. So let's just recap. The last two weeks because it's been quite dramatic to say the least and it's all medical related so you remember i went to see my uh a new pcp um general practitioner for those of you who don't know because i needed to find out what was going on with me in terms of the thyroid and everything else so i got a checkup and the blood work came out amazingly good i was very surprised i expected all sorts of horrors to show up but there was only three problems in it so no diabetes sugar level was perfect and you know there was like a fasting blood test um so that's out of the way when i have to worry about that which is good but um i was found to be unbelievably deficient almost non-existent on vitamin d you guys <laughs> so i am on 70 70,000 70, units of vitamin D every week, once a week for two entire months. And then after that, I'm supposed to go and get another blood test. So that's one problem. Problem number two, the thyroid. We knew that thyroid was very, very low. So he's putting me back on level thyroxine, which I really don't want to take because it makes me gain weight. I gained weight the last time I was on it. So he's starting me on a very low dose that's a 0.1 or 1, whatever they call it, microgram um, or 100 micrograms of levothyroxine every single day. And I had a friend of mine who is a practicing registered nurse who said that when you take levothyroxine, you're supposed to take it any time before 6 a.m on an empty stomach for some reason something happens with that medication that if you take it really early at the end of the night or at the time you wake up it's more efficient than if you wait 7 a.m 8 a.m 9 a.m or any other time during the day so i've been doing that consistently since well it's been two weeks now and i'm supposed to go back a month from now to get another blood test and check the levels and see whether or not i'm catching up with the medication at which point he's going to increase it that's what he wants to do he wants to gradually increase it so we'll see <sighs> i don't know about the weight gain guys so far i've seen nothing but you never know it's only been two weeks so number three cholesterol was a little high <laughs> cholesterol was at 219 so he said stop eating meat and stop eating fat and i looked at him and i say i'm french you imagine how possible that is right so yeah i have to cut down on the red meats and i have to cut down on the unhealthy oils and the butters and you know all of that good hidden stuff that makes everything yummy yeah so i'm trying so we're gonna see how well i'm going to do with this um again he's doing another blood test a month from now and then another one two months from now for the vitamin d so we'll see if i can get my cholesterol to go down a little bit he said there's nothing to worry about this is not something that requires medication at this point but just wanted to let you know so there was only three things okay the uh, vitamin d which again was like non-existent he looked at me and said aren't you tired it's like no not really i'm very active but apparently most people can function with my level of vitamin d because it was so low um and then the um thyroid stuff and then the cholesterol stuff we had to check okay so that was that and then three days after i got my result and my somewhat good news at the doctor's office i started having some really really bad lower abdominal pain and if you guys know i'm subject to kidney stones and i thought okay I'm having another kidney stone except that it wouldn't go away and three days later I was in absolute excruciating pain now let me say this about Sophia and pain my level of tolerance for pain I believe to be higher than anybody else I know I went into labor for Edward and I was in labor for 25 and a half hours until I finally said I give up give me the epidural couldn't take it anymore 25 and a half hours so I think I'm doing pretty good with pain, but this pain was really, really bad. We're talking fetal position bad, okay? So I went to the regular care station 
to see if maybe it was a kidney stone, if they could give me something for the pain. And I didn't have the symptoms that I was expecting to have. Like there was no back pain, nothing like this. Uh, so he said, go to the ER because we think there's something else. So I went to the ER and lo and behold, they can't figure out either. They're thinking maybe it's kidney stone, maybe it's a hernia, because I'm just having this really bad, progressively worse pain that just would not stop. It wasn't like throbbing in and out. It just was there, okay, and it would not go away. So they gave me um, a shot of some medication that was supposed to do something within 10 minutes, and half an hour later, I'm still in horrible pain, at which point they gave me morphine. Neither here nor there, what a horrid experience that was. Okay, so they gave me six grams, I think, of morphine and just like the feeling, like I thought my head was imploding. It, it was horrible. So, but 10 minutes into it, no more pain. So finally they get me into a CT scan and guess what, you guys? I had appendicitis. <laughs> so they looked at me and said, oh, um, but you were not nauseous and you didn't have any vomiting and none of that. You didn't follow the rules. We didn't think it would be that. So yeah, they had to schedule me for surgery. So <laughs> next thing you know, it's 11 o'clock at night on Saturday night in the ER and they tell me you're staying overnight, you're having surgery tomorrow morning. My appendix apparently was a little bit over nine millimeters, which to be honest, I have no idea if it's big or not. So if you're in the medical field, you comment down below and you let me know if it's big because I don't know and nor would they tell me. So yeah, I went into surgery Sunday morning and I stayed, on the ha I stayed at the hospital on Sunday, on Monday, and I was finally discharged on Tuesday with the rest of the week off because apparently um, you're supposed to stay home and do nothing which look at this girl is this something that i can do no so it was really difficult for me to stay home and do nothing and i had painkillers and that put me to sleep i was taking super long naps every single day every time i tried to pick up a book and read you would think i would look at my big pile and say woohoo finally i get time to do all my reading i couldn't take it at the three minutes i would fall asleep so i wasn't able to read at all so i'm going to let you in into one of Sophia's biggest problem it's hydration okay i have the hardest time staying hydrated and i really don't think much of it so most of the time you know i work in the field so most of the time i would have like a regular bottle of water that would be maybe almost a liter um six glasses of water maybe and that would last me the entire day and then there's be a lot of caffeine added to that but that doesn't count right and then the tea in the evening but generally speaking i really don't drink a lot of fluid okay and i know i'm supposed to but it's very difficult when you're in the field to be drinking a lot of water because you really don't have a lot of places where you can go to the bathroom you're stuck in your car and it's not like you want to go to your patient's residence to go to the bathroom okay because no a it's inappropriate and two you don't want to see what the bathroom looks like so the drinking has been very poor since i started that job um almost two years ago so when I was in the ER, they started giving me the IV fluid, you know, the saline, whatever they call it, bags, right? And now we are um, in the room, I've been transferred to the medical unit because I'm staying overnight, and we are on bag two and a half, okay? That's two and a half liters worth of fluid. And I said to myself, you know, after two and a half bags of fluid, I have no urge to go to the bathroom. So I asked them, is this normal? And they said, well, don't you have like some kind of pressure, nothing? And I said, no, but I am very swollen. So they looked into it and they says, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a scan of your bladder. So they came in with that little machine, which I didn't even know existed. It's about this big and they have like a little wand and they just go over, you know, your bladder and it says, wow, your bladder is completely empty. I said, so where did the two and a half liter of fluid go? And they looked at me and they says, ma'am, you must be seriously dehydrated because obviously your entire body and your organs have absorbed those fluids and they are not being redirected as of now to your kidneys. Um, pretty alarming, they said. So I have been ordered, not recommended, ordered by the doctors to drink, are you ready for this? A minimum of two and a half liters of water per day. 
that's a lot of water so I had to figure out something the only way I could do it while working in the field is to have a container big enough for me to carry all my water and I've been looking around like a maniac for the past week when I was feeling well you know I can't drive right now so you know Scott in front of mine was driving me around and I went to a Kmart and I found this thing okay look at the size of this thing it's insane this is called the booba um water carrier thing okay this is 72 ounces worth of liquid and it ins it is insulated and it keeps it mad cold and if i put ice cubes in the morning at the end of the day i still have ice cubes in it and the water is still very cold the only problem is that it doesn't have a straw it just has this little thing right here so you either drink it this way or you drink it this way like a uh, moonshine jug okay and i have been doing this for the past three days and i am constantly thirsty and i am drinking the two and a half liters if not more of fluid per day and I tell you what um, it's really making a big difference not just in my skin but the overall feeling that I have throughout the day but I'm constantly thirsty I guess water calls water I don't know I have no idea what that means I just said it okay um, but anyway so if you are like me and apparently you don't drink enough fluid and you're trying to figure out a way to have the appropriate containers that would let you know this is what you need to drink per day and make sure you finish it by the time you go to bed that would be it so I'll put the link below if you want to look for it Boba is the name of it um, they didn't have pink or purple they only had green and blue these are the ones I found so you just basically uh, unscrew the top and what I do is that I put um, orange slices in it um, that I squeeze a little bit just to give water um, a taste to the water and mostly water and then ice cubes on the top and that is my reserve of water on a daily basis so just letting you know that I'm doing my very best <laughs> to take care of myself because I know you guys have been worried wondering if I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to do so now that I got all the tests um, taken care of oh the OBGYN um, because we were waiting on those results would you believe I still don't have them I still don't have those results so I had to get my doctor to contact them and he's supposed to call me back with those results sometimes either Monday or Tuesday what a quack this lady I will never go back to her um, anyway that's what happens when you change insurance and you have to change your regular doctors sometimes the uh, doctors recommended by your insurance are not necessarily the best for you and definitely not this lady you remember she wanted me to go on metformin when I told my new doctor that he rolled his eyes and looked at me and says well um, I don't know where she got a degree from but that is absolutely unacceptable for PCOS so yeah that's my story and I'm sticking to it you guys that was a quick update I just wanted to let you know I am on demand oh and the surgery by the way was laparoscopic where they um, what a weird thing I'm gonna insert a picture right here so you guys can see what they do because this is just like science unbelievable um, they basically probe you with three different things one filling you up with gas the other one with a light and then he's got like those instruments and they go in and they do their thing so they went through my belly button and then two other um, little things like this so it's not like a big incision but I do have um, a weird residual glue <laughs> on me that's purple in color and it's uh, I'm supposed to not pick at it which is really difficult to do because it's bothering me um, but anyway that was laparoscopic so it makes you be able to go back to work within a week I'm going back to work tomorrow um, am I looking forward to it yeah not really but you know what I have to go to work and I have to return to work because I used all my sick days <laughs> every single one of them went into this so yeah that was my chit chat for today letting you know that I am fine I just had surgery I tolerated it very well um, the only thing is that I just couldn't get to read or do anything because I've been very lethargic and I am inflating myself with fluid on a daily basis as recommended and well scratch that ordered by the doctors taking my medication like I'm supposed to and I just have basically to work on the cholesterol so um 
we'll see what I can do with that okay so give me a big thumbs up if you like my chit chat don't forget to subscribe right here in the corner if you are brand new to my channel and I guess I will see you next time I am going to try to return to a regular schedule for videos there is a ton of projects that need to happen here in this house um i gotta do a garden update you should see the vegetables they look beautiful right now i gotta do this yes i have to finish the floor in the bathroom yes i know that's happening soon and then i have to redo the back door there's a lot of stuff that has to happen before the end of summer okay so i guess i will see you next time thank you for watching you guys bye